Welcome to Divorce in North Carolina. Today we will be discussing whether separation pay or alimony is justified, and whether men should get separation pay. If you get value from this video, please share and subscribe. Does the concept of separation pay in divorce cases in North Carolina make you scratch your head in confusion? You're not alone. The laws and regulations surrounding divorce can be a complex labyrinth to navigate, especially when it comes to the topic of separation pay. In this video, we're going to delve into this very subject. We'll explore the nuances of separation pay in divorce cases in North Carolina, shedding light on its intricacies, its ifs and buts. To bring the subject matter closer to reality, we'll be using case studies. These real-world examples will illustrate different scenarios, providing a clearer understanding of when separation pay is justified and when it isn't. We'll also touch on a topic that has been stirring up conversations. Should men receive separation pay or alimony? It's a complex issue that warrants a closer look. So buckle up and brace yourself. Let's dive into the complicated world of divorce and separation pay in North Carolina. First off, let's understand what we mean by separation pay. Separation pay, also known as alimony or spousal support, is a financial provision often given to a spouse post-separation or divorce. It is a monetary amount, typically paid on a monthly basis, to a spouse who may be unable to sustain their standard of living after the dissolution of the marriage. The aim of separation pay is to limit the economic effects of a divorce by providing a continuous income to the non-wage earning or lower wage earning spouse. Now, it's important to note that separation pay isn't guaranteed in every divorce or separation. It's generally awarded under certain circumstances and is subject to the discretion of the court. Factors that can influence its awarding include the length of the marriage, the standard of living during the marriage, and the financial resources of each spouse. The court also takes into account the age, physical and emotional health of both parties. In some cases, separation pay is temporary, providing support while the recipient spouse gets back on their feet, perhaps by gaining employment or education. This is often referred to as rehabilitative alimony. In other instances, separation pay can be permanent, particularly in long-term marriages where one spouse may have been out of the workforce for a significant period. If you are getting value from this video, please subscribe. There's also something called lump sum alimony, a one-time payment, which can be given instead of monthly payments. This is typically used when the paying spouse has a large amount of non-liquid assets. It's worth noting that separation pay isn't a punitive measure. It's not about penalizing a spouse for the divorce. Instead, it's about economic fairness, ensuring that the spouse who may have sacrificed career opportunities for the marriage isn't left in a financially precarious position post-divorce. However, laws and specifics about separation pay can vary from state to state. So it's always a good idea to consult with a legal expert if you're navigating a divorce or separation. Now that we understand what separation pay is, let's look at some real life case studies. In the first case, we're looking at a scenario where no separation pay was awarded. Imagine a couple, let's call them Jack and Jill. They've been married for a span of five years, with no children, and their financial contributions to the household are pretty much equal. Both Jack and Jill have stable jobs and are able to support themselves independently. Their separation was amicable, and they mutually agreed to part ways. Now in this case, Jack sought separation pay or alimony post-divorce, but the court decided not to award any. The question is, why? The answer lies in the unique circumstances of this case and the principles that guide such decisions. If you're getting value from this video, please share or subscribe. Firstly, the court looks at the financial standing of both parties. In Jack and Jill's case, they both had stable incomes and were self-sufficient. There was no significant disparity in their earnings, and neither party was financially dependent on the other during the marriage. This played a major role in the court's decision. Secondly, the court considers the duration of the marriage. A marriage of five years, while not insignificant, is relatively short when compared to marriages that last decades. The court often views longer marriages as more likely to justify separation pay especially if one party has sacrificed career growth for the sake of the household or children. Thirdly, the court takes into account the reason for the separation. 
In this case the separation was mutual and amicable, with no misconduct or fault from either party contributing to the divorce. This factored into the court's decision as well. Finally, the court considers whether either party will face severe financial hardship due to the divorce. In Jack and Jill's case, both were able to maintain their standard of living post-divorce, which further solidified the court's decision. So, what does this mean for Jack and Jill, and for others in similar situations? It means that separation pay is not a given in every divorce case. It's awarded based on specific circumstances and considerations. For Jack and Jill, they both walked away from their marriage without any financial obligations towards each other, allowing them a clean break and a fresh start. In this case, the court's decision was not about punishing or favoring one party over the other. Rather, it was about ensuring fairness and financial independence for both parties. As we can see, the court's decision was based on a number of factors. Each case is unique, and each decision is tailored to the specific circumstances of the parties involved. Just because separation pay wasn't awarded in this case, doesn't mean it won't be in others. It's all about the individual details, and that's something to bear in mind as we explore further. If you are getting value from this video, please subscribe and share. Now let's examine a case where separation pay was awarded. Let's dive into a hypothetical scenario. Imagine a couple, let's call them John and Jane, they've been married for 25 years. John was the primary breadwinner, while Jane stayed home, raising their three kids and managing the household. When their marriage fell apart, Jane found herself in a precarious financial situation. Without a recent job history or any significant assets in her name, she faced an uphill battle to maintain a lifestyle anywhere near what she was accustomed to during her marriage. In their divorce proceedings, Jane's lawyer argued for separation pay, also known as alimony. Her argument hinged on a few key factors. First, the length of the marriage. With a 25-year-long marriage, Jane had been out of the workforce for a significant amount of time. Second, the disparity in income and earning potential between John and Jane was substantial. John had a lucrative career, while Jane lacked recent work experience and skills to secure a well-paying job. Lastly, Jane had been the primary caregiver for their children, which had further distanced her from the job market. And what was the court's response? The court agreed with Jane's lawyer. The judge recognized that Jane had made significant sacrifices for the family, which had indirectly contributed to John's successful career. The judge acknowledged the financial disparity between the couple and the difficulty Jane would face in maintaining a reasonable standard of living post-divorce. John was ordered to pay Jane a monthly amount in separation pay. This decision aimed to level the financial playing field, allowing Jane a transition period to become self-sufficient. The court's decision was based on a combination of factors, including the length of the marriage, the income disparity, and Jane's role as a caregiver. But what were the implications for John and Jane? For John, he faced a financial obligation. He had to adjust his lifestyle to account for the monthly payments. It was a considerable change, but the court deemed it necessary to ensure Jane's financial stability. For Jane, the separation pay provided a safety net. It offered her a chance to start over, to gain new skills, and to seek employment without the immediate pressure of financial instability. It was a lifeline, but it was also a reminder of the sacrifices she had made during her marriage. Remember, every divorce case is unique, and the awarding of separation pay depends on a variety of factors. It is not a guaranteed outcome, nor is it a one-size-fits-all solution. It's a tool that courts use to ensure a fair distribution of financial resources when a marriage ends. Again, the court's decision was based on a combination of factors. It's important to remember that separation pay isn't about punishing one party or rewarding the other. It's about fairness, balance, and ultimately, a fresh start for both parties involved. So, what can we learn from these two cases? Let's delve into the heart of the matter, drawing comparisons and contrasts between the two cases. Each case is a unique puzzle, with its own set of circumstances, nuances and details that influence the court's decisions. Firstly, let's take a look at the case where no separation pay was awarded. Here, the court took into account several key factors. The couple had a short-lived marriage, 
lasting less than a decade. The spouse seeking separation pay was gainfully employed and capable of maintaining a decent standard of living without additional financial support. Furthermore, there was no evidence of any misconduct on the part of the other spouse that could have tipped the scales in favor of separation pay. The court, considering these elements, concluded that separation pay was not warranted in this case. On the other hand, we have the case where separation pay was granted. The circumstances in this case were significantly different. The marriage had spanned over two decades, a considerable length of time. The spouse seeking support had been a homemaker for the majority of the marriage, left without any substantial means of self-support post-separation. Additionally, the other spouse had a considerably higher earning capacity. The court in this case felt that separation pay was justified to maintain the lesser earning spouse's standard of living and to bridge the economic gap created by the separation. Comparing these two cases, it's evident that the court's decision is heavily influenced by the individual circumstances of each case. Factors such as the length of the marriage, the economic disparity between the spouses, the earning capacity of each spouse, and the standard of living established during the marriage play pivotal roles. However, it's also crucial to remember that the court doesn't make decisions based on these factors in isolation. Rather, it's the interplay of these variables that shapes the final verdict. For instance, the court might be more inclined to award separation pay in a long-term marriage where one spouse is significantly economically disadvantaged. But the same might not hold true if the disadvantaged spouse has a high earning capacity or if the marriage was of a shorter duration. Also noteworthy is that misconduct such as infidelity or abuse can potentially influence the court's decision. However, it's not a definitive factor and the court weighs it in conjunction with the other elements. It's also worth noting that gender does not play a role in the court's decision to award separation pay. Both men and women can seek and receive separation pay, as the court's decision is based on the circumstances of the case, not the gender of the parties involved. As we can see, each case is unique and the court's decision is based on a variety of factors. Now, let's tackle a contentious question. Should men get separation pay or alimony? There's a common misconception that separation pay, also known as alimony, is only for women. But let's clear that up right off the bat. Men can and do receive separation pay. It's not about gender, but about financial need and maintaining the standard of living established during the marriage. Let's consider a few case studies to illustrate this. Take the example of John a stay-at-home dad who gave up his career to support his wife's successful corporate ambitions. When they divorced, John had been out of the workforce for over a decade, making it difficult for him to secure a job that would allow him to maintain the lifestyle he was accustomed to. In this scenario, the court awarded John separation pay until he could become financially independent. On the other hand, there's Mark, a successful entrepreneur. His wife, Lisa, was a part-time teacher who primarily took care of their children. When they divorced, Mark's income was significantly higher than Lisa's. Despite this, Mark argued that he should receive separation pay due to Lisa inheriting a substantial amount from her family. The court, however, determined that inheritance is not considered income for alimony purposes, and Mark did not receive separation pay. In a third scenario, we have Robert and Emily, both successful professionals with similar incomes. They decided to divorce but, given their financial parity, neither was awarded separation pay. These cases highlight that the awarding of separation pay is not about gender, but about financial circumstances, the standard of living during the marriage, and the ability of each spouse to maintain that standard post-divorce. It's also essential to note that societal attitudes are shifting. As we see more men taking on caregiving roles and more women becoming primary earners, there's a growing recognition that men may also need financial support after divorce. However, it's not as simple as whether men should or shouldn't receive separation pay. There are many factors to consider, including the length of the marriage, each party's current and future earning potential, the standard of living during the marriage, and whether one party contributed to the other's career or education. And let's not forget the emotional aspect. Some men may feel uncomfortable or even stigmatized for seeking alimony, while others see it as a fair request given their contribution to the marriage. It's a personal decision, 
and there's no right or wrong answer. In conclusion, the question of men and separation pay is far from black and white. It's a nuanced issue that requires careful consideration of multiple factors. As with all aspects of divorce, the question of men and separation pay is complex and depends on the specific circumstances. So, is separation pay justified in divorce cases in North Carolina? A question that seems simple on the surface, but as we've delved deeper into the intricacies of this topic, we've seen that it's anything but. Over the course of this video, we've explored what separation pay is and examined cases where separation pay was and was not awarded. We've compared these cases side by side to understand the differences and the commonalities. We've also looked at how men specifically are impacted by the issue of separation pay in North Carolina. We've learned that separation pay, a type of financial support that one spouse may be required to provide to the other during the divorce process, is not automatically granted. Instead, it's awarded based on a variety of factors, including the length of the marriage, the financial situation of each spouse, and the living standard established during the marriage. In some cases, separation pay is not awarded at all. This often happens when both spouses are financially independent, or if the marriage was short-lived. On the other hand, separation pay may be granted if one spouse has been financially dependent on the other, or if the divorce would otherwise lead to a significant decline in their standard of living. As for men and separation pay, we've seen that while historically it was more common for women to receive this type of support, the landscape is changing. Today, men are just as likely to receive separation pay if the circumstances justify it. The focus is not on the gender of the spouse, but rather on the financial reality of the situation. So to circle back to our original question, is separation pay justified? The answer is that it depends. It depends on the specific circumstances of each case. It depends on the financial realities of each spouse. It depends on the standard of living established during the marriage. While there's no one-size-fits-all answer, understanding the factors that influence the court's decision can help you navigate the complex world of divorce and separation pay.